We'll start off with, with one little thing. We'll start off with the FM bugs. FM bugs, I want to know about the FM bugs. how did they start? Yes. All right. So, so up to, up to that, that point in time, the only FM bug was a terrible one transistor uh, FM bug with an, an aerial coil, yep. which was uh, which was on the on the PC so board. So it's got got no gain for the mic either. It was just one no, one transistor. That's right, one transistor, yep. and of course it had no cue for the coil because yep. the, the coil was just a flat coil on the PC board. Oh, the whole etched cons- into the board, it, right? right. Yep. A very yep. bad design. Yep. Just a bad design. So who did that one? It was Electronics Australia. It would have been Phil Waite or somebody like that right. did it for one of the one of these um. Um, Dick Smith um, oh, fun okay. ways thing, fun Some, way things, something right. like that. Okay. So what I had is that I just can't remember what I was tinkling with in in the in, in the workroom, but I was tinkling with uh, a couple of transistors and a coil mm-hmm. and a, a little bit of wiring and things like that. And I had to go. I, obviously, you go away t- to the to the FM radio because yeah. you don't want feedback. Yeah, exactly. So I turned it on. And I went to the FM radio, tuned it in, and I could hear it. But in those days, we had a, a, a tuning meter yep. on, on that, so that very, very, it was only one or two bars, was very, very weak. So I thought, oh, well, I've got it quite clear. I can hear the boys in the room working and yep. talking. I said, just, just talk in the background quietly, and I could hear them. So lovely and clear, perfectly clear, but almost no signal strength. It was right. absolute, the signal strength of the end, it was almost down to nothing. So... I went back to this two transistor thing, mm. and I'd left a wire off. I'd forgotten whether it was the antenna wasn't connected, right. or something like that wasn't touching. So, oh, soldered that on, went back, the signal strength was huge. <laughs> right. I thought, that's great. So I picked it all up carefully, a bit of cardboard, a bit of yeah, paper, yeah. took it outside, took it outside, and I went down, down three or four houses. Yep. And it was unbelievable. It was... It just just worked magic. Yes, normally you think of an FM radio a microphone just yep. to, the, to the radio, you know, ten meters or five yep. meters just within the room, and I went quite a few houses down. Mm-hmm. They said, "Yeah, we still picked it up," and it was absolutely amazing. So that was the beginning because right. I had just picked up yep. because the other ones had no cue in the, in the coil, so it had yep. no gain, had no yep. output at all. Yeah, but I had just picked everything right. So right. from that time on, I just made up that little printed circuit yep. board in that long strip like that mm-hmm. because that's the way the circuit works. No it's, one yeah. had done no yeah. one had done that before. Everybody right. just made a square, a square board, one. Which was, yeah. was just senseless. Every part, all odd parts everywhere. Yeah. The the actual board didn't match the circuit diagram. There was no correlation. Mm-hmm. There was no there was no no mechanics with the whole thing. So yeah. I changed the whole concept to make it to make mm-hmm. it all logical, linear and make it work. Yep. And Put the FM bug at the ant was the first one. The, the ant, and, and that was absolutely brilliant. And that was in one of your regular issues, wasn't it? I don't, can't remember it? whether I put it on the cover or something like that. Yeah, one I of can't those, remember either. One of those things I, mm. I did the PC board for. I, I made yep. a, a book up, five FM bugs. Five FM bugs, yep. And I've I've got the whole collection. I've still got the whole collection. Right. And it was just yep. huge success. Yep. And of course we had variations on the whole yep. thing. We put we put amplifiers on it. We had RF amplifiers. We put extra transistors. All different yep. concepts. All very low the whole idea was to keep it under mm. 30 or 50 milliwatts because yep. when you start getting a high output mm. you get splash over you get yep. annoyance you get people interfering with things and you do get mm. a lot of problems so my idea was never to have this one watt, oh, one yeah, watt sure. rf yep. amplifier stage it was all just how much you can do with very little yep very little output one of the people came back to me, either wrote to me or rang mm. me up or something. He had put one of the bugs on Mount Dandenong. Yeah. He lived 27 kilometres away <laughs> down, the, down the way. Yeah. And he still heard his still bug 27 kilometres. And it would have been no more than, it was, an, it was an, either wow. an ant or a very simple thing. Yep. But it had the height yep. and it had no, no interference in between. And he would have a decent antenna on it too. Yes, he would have had, had the, the half wavelength. Yes, he would, and, yep. he, and his radio and his... A car radio would yep. have had a good receiver, yep. but it still went wow. 27 kilometres with, <laughs> uh, it wouldn't have been more than between 10 and 30 milliwatts. Yep. So these were your most pop, probably your most popular they were, project, and, the it, FM bugs? They, yep. they were the one, yep. but the train books were a huge success. Okay, I was never into the train, because oh, well. I was sort of past my train period at right. that time. I had There's three times it. more train people really? than electronics people. Yep. 
I can imagine. Yes. And what were in the train? Just train controllers and yes, light yes. controllers, yes, signal, that's, yes, whistle that's right. sounds. And... Yeah, it had a few sounds right. and things. Yep. Yes, pedestrian crossing, and we right. had capacitor discharge unit. We had a power supply yep. for it. had a whole range of different things. Right. They've been a huge success. Oh, because fantastic. people with train sets can't get these add-ons, yep. and they spend thousands on their train mm. set, yep. and they want to have uh, added features as well. To make it interactive that's and right. make it... Yes. Uh, because the train yeah. set's not just trains going around. It's actually the things like things moving. Yes. Other oh, it's, 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 it's their whole life, yeah, these yeah. train people. They have it's... it running around the kitchen <laughs> and running <laughs> through the walls and yes. things. So, How so many they... train books did you produce? Two. Oh, there were two. only two. Yes. But the that kits were very popular. Very, popular. very, very popular. Right. Oh, wow. Yes. <gasps> where, where were most of your sales for these kits? In well, Australia? Because well, yes, the magazine yes, yes, was yes. only in Australia. That's right. It's only in Australia, yes. Right. That's right. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you didn't really. Yeah. There was well, no avenue for overseas no, back, back no, before the internet, was no, there? No, that's there right. Was no, and, no. and that brings me on to how people paid for things. Because I remember you were the only one, who only business that I knew of, who would accept uh, stamps yes, that's as right, payment. Yeah. I yes, thought, because yeah. I was a kid, I yeah. didn't have, well, we, we didn't have credit cards back in those no, days. Or if no. you did... It no, it just like came in. Yeah. No, we, and about the fourth or fifth yeah. magazine, one of the boys who was serving a customer came to me, and I was in the room. He said, yeah. uh, a customer's got a, uh, a, a, a state bank credit card here. Do we yeah. take credit cards? I said, what's a credit card? Credit card. <laughs> I said, what's the point in that? He said, yeah. I will. But I kept my mouth shut. I thought, right. no, I won't make a fool of myself. Right. I said, what I'll do is I'll go to the bank, mm. And I'll find out about it. Yep. So I went to the ANZ Bank, seventy dollars. Yep. To buy the machine, to, the, to, to the, 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 the card, the imprinter, the imprinter, yep. seventy dollars yep. to set to set it all up. Yeah. And in the finish, of course, they didn't have to send us the card. People thought they had to send us the card. Oh, right. Some people used to post the card to us. <laughs> they posted. No, they did. The a few people, card. yeah. Well, they thought they had to just to <laughs> yeah. prove they had it. Right. But eventually, they they understood that they could they could write the number down. Yep. And they didn't have the, the secret number on the back in the old yeah, days. That's right. They just had the. Uh, yep. In fact, it was only fourteen digits to start with. Oh, was it? Yes, okay. and, and it finished up with sixteen digits yep. in the finish. So we had the fourteen digits, and of course, and I just copied mm. them out on, on huge sheets. And in finish, fifty percent of our business finished up credit cards. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. At what date was that? Around? Oh, I can't remember. Right. It just gradually increased, right. increased, yep. and increased until fifty percent of our business was, was credit, credit card. cards. Because I remember when I was still a kid, like my parents, we were poor family. My parents didn't have credit cards. It was cash for everything if yes. we didn't have any money, yes. you know. And I didn't have, you know, anything like that. And, and to go, you had to pay an extra two dollars fifty for a money order yes. or something like that's that for right. the post office. So sending stamps was yes, that's right. saving two dollars fifty. Yeah. Of course, I used so many great. stamps that yep. the quite number. Of, but one of the boys. He sent me stamps that already licked. Oh, he so he, yes. Stamps. So he, so they were useless to me. So I had to lick them. I had to put glue on A them, glue on them. And, and stick. I didn't mind. I wasn't going to complain. Yeah, right. Because you just never know in this world exactly. who this person is. Exactly. So a boy rang me up. He sent in for about three kits, yep. sixteen dollars at a time, and things like that. I gradually yep. used them up because he yep. had. Uh, I know where he got them from now, because his mother worked as solicitor's office. Uh, she right. wash, washed them off, gave them to him, <laughs> all the ones, and yep. he sent them to me. Yep. Right? I didn't complain. I sent him his goods, because that's what I offered. Yep. I didn't say they had to be had glue on them. No, so that's right. You I, didn't I, I, did, I did use yep. them up. I put sticky tape on them. I used them up. Please Sheridan Electronics. See, we bought lots Sheridan. Of stuff. Oh, you we bought, bought. Oh, yes. Right, we, you we, you bought out Sheridan. No, no, I bought a lot of stuff. Oh, I couldn't. Oh, buy, right. Okay, couldn't you, buy him out. Right. Okay. Of course, as he said, he wanted yep. one hundred and fifty thousand for it. Oh, did he? So I went on the day, right. and of course, he was crying. He said, "Oh, it's all been gone for twenty three thousand. Yep. You know. I said, "Well." You know, it, it's all last year's stuff. Yeah. I, I, I took a few thousand dollars worth of it, right. but, but that's all you can get now. Yeah. And of course, I couldn't even get rid of it. Once I even bought it from I right. couldn't get rid of it. Yeah. Because it was just dying from yeah, under exactly. our feet as all... we were going. He was yeah. lucky to, to move out when he did because yeah. he couldn't sell it. I said, you've tried. Yeah. You're spending $400 every month in Times Australia, yep. putting out all your specials and sold mm -hmm. a few bucket loads. But he still had he had hundreds of thousands of dollars, yep. and he wanted one hundred and fifty thousand just yep. to clear out the stuff. Just I to said, clear it out. Well, yeah. I, I haven't got the space for it. I think it. I bought some a whole bunch of stuff. I see tubes. A friend of mine bought out a bunch of his component cabinets yes, and stuff like yes. that. And, 
you know, and oh, then his yeah. son started up in Blacktown. Oh, did he? Started a store in he Blacktown, must have, which is must out have, near He must I have live. taken all the, the yeah, cream I of the stock. Yeah, I think he took a, a fair bit, yes. but that didn't last more no. than six months. And no. I don't know whatever no. happened to poor old Mike Sheridan. Yes. And uh, what? There was Dave Reed Electronics in the city as well. Oh, right. I'm not sure what happened to them. But yes. uh, were there any other surplus yes, there were. component supplies in Melbourne? Yes, yeah? yes. Well, Jock Who Ellis the... started off. Ellis, so okay. The Electronic, yep. he started yep. off. He, first of all, bought all the stuff from Tottenham. Right. He bought all their old crows and all their test equipment. Right. Because we used to do a lot of um, uh, electronic stuff here yep. for, for England. We, we made a few planes here okay. and we made a lot of equipment to send to England because yep. we're very technical here. Right. So we sent off a lot of radios and things like that uh, from mm. here and then we had a lot of equipment. And he had all the, you know, obviously just a, a round tube in, yep. in a very old, it might have been five meg or something like that. He had yep. hundreds and hundreds of crows. And right. he had a little tiny shop and he made a lot of money out of them because he bought them for practically nothing. Yep. And he made a huge amount of money out and then he started to store. And he's, right. he, he brought a lot of uh, surplus stuff into the store. Then he bought a lot of new stuff. And, of course, it just boomed and boomed. Of course, then it slid away yeah. because as yeah. the market went away, you know, it could just every year was, it was just dying.